Okay, so this one is you stop working basically. There could be a fuse or it could be yeah, so there could be a fuse in this system that is blown because of the pump that's plugged up with debris. So we're gonna pull the pump out and take a look at it. Uh, the pump float was sticking. So um, I got it. Uh, basically, we had it on an on off switch rather than using the float. So the float mechanism on the pump uh, was sticking. So uh, the pump is not working at all right now. The first thing to do is, of course, is to check the voltage to make sure it's getting voltage. In this situation, you have to be very careful because there's water here and so here's your disclaimer this video is for informational purposes only informational purposes only if in doubt always contact your local professional because working with sump pumps and electricity can be hazardous and may cause death okay here's the pump switch Check the voltage. Got the pump out. You can see it. Yes, it's tired. It's also got hair. Looks like now these are roots. It's likely that there are roots inside, uh, or the bushing in the motor is shot. took this apart I ran a hot wire jumper directly to these wires here these are the main feed lines I by bypass the switch the float switch and I run, run a jumper line and it would not come on so that motor is basically shot it's a sealed motor uh, it's possible to take it apart but it's a lot of work okay so it looks like new pump time we have to find a close out here Normally 93 bucks, 49.99 on sale. Hopefully this will work. This has an external float setup. And so basically, this is the switch here, that is the float. which is wired into the motor. So this little thing here goes on there. This mounts up here. And this is a little magnet. inside of here to activate the switch basically and as that goes up then the switch turns it on and it goes back down and shuts it off okay everything is pretty good I tested it temporarily and the only thing is, is that's just wires and that is a plug. 
And so, let's look at that. Basically, we need to hook the socket, the junction box, and a bubble cover onto that. Supposedly, there's no GFI required according to the manufacturer. And if we look at the socket here, you see this is the gold side, which means the black, and this is the white side. These are white screws. These are gold screws. These are the darker screws. These go on the black side. So that means that this plug here has the black on the left, and I had that uh, wired correctly just to test it, luckily for me. And so, if you're ever curious as to which wire goes which, and on the socket, that's the way I have it wired up. The white wire is on the right, and the black wire is on the left. There may be some exceptions, but that is the case uh, for this right now. Uh, once again, on the male end of the socket, the white wire is on the right, and the black wire is on the left. And of course, the middle terminal is the ground. So we're going to put a small junction box in here, and um, uh, then we'll have that uh, plug so we don't have to modify this. If we modify that, then we may uh, not uh, hold up on the warranty. And so I'm not going to cut those wires, I'm going to put it in the socket and make it right. Okay, let's get the final test. Okay, it's all ready to roll, ready to rock and roll. That water box is actually starting to starting to deteriorate, but we got her done. And so this is Bill the Handyman signing out. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.